Hi everyone, welcome back to the garden and it's September already. Can you believe it? To me, the summer's just absolutely flown by. Now, my videos might have been a bit sporadic recently, but before I begin today's video, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who watched, liked and commented on my summer garden tour video. It really is appreciated. And a massive thanks as well for the feedback on my recent POV garden photography experiment. I've decided on reflection to take the video off my channel and not really explore that kind of things, mainly for the reason that my photography and my gardening in my head, they're definitely interlinked together. But I appreciate the photography side of things. It's not really what a lot of you guys are into. So I've decided to just focus on the garden tours, the style of videos that I know you'll love. And this month, I've got some beauties coming up. One garden in particular that will absolutely blow your mind. But before that, I wanted to do today's video. It's a new little format I'm trying called cool plants or something similarly catchy like that just pretty much an introduction a few tips on how i use them in the garden here and to get the best out of them through our uk weather so anyway let's get on with the first one and we're looking at hardy bromeliad you might recognize the plants in today's video from my recent trip to vertigo garden center near york i got some absolute plant bargains from there and the first one is this this is fascicularia bicolor it's a hardy bromeliad technically related to the pineapple but rather than being some tropical rarity that we struggle to grow here, this is actually surprisingly tough. You don't need to worry about winter protection, at least for most of the UK. And this is a plant from a distance. Yes, it can look a bit grass-like. It's overall quite green. It's actually a lot sharper, more serrated edges to these than the grass, so be careful about that. It's got a bit of a silvery underside, but the main reason you grow this is for that beautiful red color in there. From around midsummer to late summer, these red bracts really show off bright scarlet colouring they definitely stand out and i believe these are known well according to the internet anyway as baboon's bottom which I hardly need to say anything it pretty much gives it away there but right in the middle of that baboon's bottom you've got these amazing blue flowers which is such an unexpected exotic surprise to me that blue color is not something you often see in nature especially here in the uk and when combined with that red it really is an exotic rarity that you should try growing in your garden now, how do I grow them here in mine? Well, I actually mainly grow these as quite a low level plant. And one of the things I'm trying to improve in my garden is layering. To have planting that's more dense, but spread across different heights and having ground cover mid-level plants is a key part of that. So I grow these generally at the minute, planted around my Jubea chilensis, my Chilean wine palm, and the other plants in a more Mediterranean desert island style area. A plant like this is great. They get to around a metre wide, probably not quite as tall as that, but still a good size. So they fill out nicely, they fill a space with a plant that looks exotic, you don't have to worry about, it doesn't really need maintenance. The only thing I would say is, if you ever want to divide it or weed around it like I need to with this one, definitely wear gloves because they're actually quite sharp. One cool fact about these hardy bromeliads, in their habitat, they actually grow as both a terrestrial plant, growing in the soil, in the ground, and also as an epiphyte, growing on tree branches or wherever they can find a footing, I suppose. So that can give you some ideas about how you can grow them in your garden. Personally, I do grow mine in the ground, and I choose somewhere that's not too saturated in winter, maybe raised up a little bit. I'm sort of taking the clue that as a bromeliad, something that grows up in trees, they like the moisture, but they don't like to be sat in it. They like good drainage, and that's what I tend to do here. When it comes to sunlight, mine are more at the sunny end of the garden. I've got a feeling that the light helps them really show off those colors in summer. But then again, I've seen them when I went to Wales over at Picton Castle, growing in quite a wooded, shady area, and they look to be doing just fine there as well. If you want some more interesting ideas, check out in the description, I'll put links to these. Kev Spence, who posts over at Growing in the Edge, he's actually got some growing in a tree and they look really cool there. The guys over at Alternative Eden as well, they've got one growing in the crook of a tree, spilling out, and it almost looks like a yucca rostrata, very cool way of showing it off. And I guess really something like this, you can maybe grow them in crevices in walls, potentially in hanging baskets. There's definitely a few options. To me, they're one of those really cool plants that you might not notice it straight away, but as you're looking through the garden, you really want that interest to really hold your gaze and plant like this, but definitely be something that most people won't have seen before. Generally speaking, I don't like to give exact hardiness figures for any of the plants in my channel because there's so many different factors that go into how tough a plant is, its age, planting conditions, everything like that. But fascicularia bicolor, that one is very hardy and should be tough for most of the UK. This next one's not quite as tough, but still it should be able to take considerable cold. And it's this here. 
Now, again, it does look quite similar. To me, the leaves, they may be a little bit slimmer. That red color is maybe a little bit richer and darker, but I suppose really it's the same kind of look. If you enjoy one, you'll definitely like the other one. This used to be known as Fasicularia pitcairnifolia, but I believe now it's correctly known as either Fasicularia bicolor subspecies caniliculata or Fasicularia bicolor subspecies bicolor. I don't know. <laughs> I don't get too involved in the scientific naming process with a lot of these plants, but what I do know is it's another great alternative. I'm gonna have this one either growing high up in the large cherry tree that hangs over the garden, maybe perched in that brick shed, or even growing out of one of my Trachycarpus palms behind me. I'm sure that bright red rosette will definitely look striking in summer. If you come to the point where you put your main structural plants in your garden, and you're looking to fill in those sort of gaps, those low level gaps, the edge of a border, something that spills over the edge of a raised bed, but you still want something exotic, these plants are a great shout for it. So a couple of interesting plants to try, maybe something that you haven't heard of, or maybe something that you've got just the right spot for in your garden. Today's video is quite short on care tips because I don't really do anything for these plants. In winter, I just leave them to it, no protection, and they get on just fine here. I've got both of them growing outside, no problems at all. And I suppose when it comes to summer, this summer has been quite dry. So naturally they've been watered occasionally with the rest of the Mediterranean plants, only really a few times this summer. But if you've got it growing higher up in a small pot or container, then just water it a bit more frequently, maybe twice a week, something like that. So that's pretty much all there is to it. So two very cool plants. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.